all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show uh, i wanted to continue our discussion about the fetal tissue and its usage i wanted to spe- specifically address which vaccines may have used the fetal tissue and where and number 2 if they have the fetal tissue we talked about it before as well and number 3 if that fetal tissue is actually injected in us which is incorrect they these do not have the fetal tissue but assuming that something has the tissue and if it is injected in us how would our body react with this i wanted to qualify the whole discussion beforehand i am not a religious scholar of any religion because of that i cannot actually talk in a more um, i i cannot be qualified to discuss the religious aspects of it second disclosure i am not a lawyer so i can also not discuss correctly the legal um, structures around fetal tissue usage thirdly i am not a researcher who uses the fetal tissue because of that i'm not on a daily basis Pro, uh, more accustomed to understanding what are the laws and regulations and and usage needs so because of this these areas when i touch upon them i would actually appreciate if you know more please add that in the comments with this i would also um, think aloud for a second that those folks who actually do not want to use vaccine and are looking for reasons to not use i would suspect and i would actually um, submit that this discussion that we will do today is probably going to be more useful to understand where are the issues compared to the videos that i had discussed last time where the woman was talking about mrc5 cells and somehow they are in the injection so having said that let's look at fetal tissue related um issues and then our body's response if it is injected and i would show you some comments as well uh, the gist of the comments I'll, i'll tell you now for example one comment was that you guys are still playing with the dna human dna and that is what we don't want another comment was that you are going to change our dna and that is going to be we don't want that and there are some more comments in that line as well once again i'm not going to sit here and try to change the mind of a person who does not want to have a vaccine there are there used to be more reasons before i think nowadays there are newer reasons as well for example the rapid rapidity of the development of a vaccine less trials maybe or newer technologies maybe and so on so i think you can have your own legitimate reasons but i would like if you are a cool bean and you don't want to have a vaccine i would at least like you not to be uh, using incorrect science and be more uh, open to the actual scientific reasoning and you can then again nobody is going to push it this is one part of medical ethics that you cannot ask a patient to take a treatment that you as a doctor think they should there is another socio economic ethic where it seems that some employers are going to say that if you are going to come into the workplace you may need to have the vaccine uh, before you can come in that is something i cannot comment on because that is out of my um my area my domain it's not something i can influence so i can provide you more of the science behind things from a medical point of view and so let's have that discussion so uh, luffy i was looking for luffy he uh, nowadays he's quiet at this time okay so let's start so some of the links that are in the description this is of course drbean.com and we have an annual sale going on so if you are interested in our lectures uh please buy the subscription i think it is very discounted at this time then here is the um 
American Medical Association and their opinion piece. And let me qualify the whole thing that how are we going to discuss it? I want to discuss fetal tissue related things in terms of ethics and laws and regulations. Then why is it used? How many areas it is used in? Can we use other tissue than fetal tissue? Then if the tissue, any tissue, fetal tissue or other, enters our body, can they get away by just injecting some cells in us? And what will happen? How would our body react? Then do the vaccines actually have the fetal tissue? Or are they, as I, I read a, uh, an article by a, a Catholic um, newspaper or news area where they talked about a term called tainted uh, vaccine, where the vaccine itself may not have the fetal tissue or may not be used making using the fetal tissue, but it may be tested remotely by some copies of the fetal tissue. And they kind of thought that it was okay. So I'll show you that as well. Again, if I do not talk about other religions, <laughs> I know I'm going to get beaten up by one way or the other. But it is not that I did not want to talk about the other religions. Uh, you can send me the links for your religion and I can look at it. But I'm not a religious scholar of any religion. So for me to be able to comprehend and provide a, a, psychology, a, a philosophy and then a correct statement will be impossible to do. I'm a doctor. So these are the things that I want to talk about. So here, res uh, research using human fetal tissue. And first, I wanted to make sure that we understand why do we use the fetal tissue. So let's go here for a second and understand that part. In us, when we have, for, for us human beings, adult human beings, we have various kinds of cells, correct? We have muscle cells, bone cells, nervous tissue cells, eyes, liver, kidney, and so on, blood cells. We have two basic kinds of cell when we are adult or when we are born. One kind of cells are called stable, stable cells. Stable cells cannot divide further. They do not divide anymore. They are what they are. For example, a muscle cell is made, it is formed, it is not going to divide, it is not going to make more cells. So that is a stable cell. A neuron is a neuron. It has become that cell and the genes in the DNA of that cell have become locked, which allow it to replicate, which allow that cell to divide and increase in number. Those genes have become locked. The cell has become what it was going to become. So that is done. So that is a stable cell. On the other hand, we can also have non-stable cell or something that we call multipotential cells or pluripotential cells. Um, pluri means many, potential means potential, that they can make many things. For example, in our bone marrow, we have cells that make blood. Those cells are pluripotential cells even in adults. And these cells then divide into more cell lines. And those cell lines, some of them make WBCs or white blood cells, some of them make red blood cells, some of them make platelets, and so on. And this, these cells in our adult life will continue to make more blood forever till the end of our life. So they are not stable. They can continue to differentiate, we call it. They can continue to divide and multiply. Similarly, you know, immune cells. The, For example, if we have a virus, we've been talking about COVID for a long time. And here is a B cell, for example. This B cell, when it is stimulated with IL-5, for example, interleukin-5, the B cell would clone itself. It would make copies of itself and it would increase in number. On the other hand, if you look at a fetus, when we are all developing in our mothers, what happens is we start with two cells, correct? M maternal cell and a, and a paternal cell. The two cells come together, they fertilize, they diffuse with each other, or they come 
and join together and they bring in half chromosome from mother and half from father and then they join together and make diploid or two the full set of chromosomes then this cell the fused cell starts dividing one cell into two and then each cell again into two and then they continue doing that so that is the cell division that happens inside the fetus then as the cells divide they start becoming differentiated so i'm now teaching <laughs> embryology some part of embryology you know that my embryology videos are very popular so uh, they start differentiating they start becoming more of a target tissue for example some cells from here will start becoming muscle cells so we are saying they would differentiate into a muscle some cells are going to start becoming a neuron and we would say they are differentiating into a neuron so proliferation means increasing in number and differentiation means becoming a specific type of a cell in fetal tissue almost all cells have this capability to continue to divide and increase in number this capability is what is used by the scientists when they try to use these cells in research adult cells do not have this capability if we say for example we take blood cells which have the capability of dividing but they would only make blood cells from there we cannot make a muscle cell for example if this was the reason that fetal tissue was used there is one more reason and that reason is called aging we know that all of us adults once we are born we start aging and then after a, some age we die and the reason for that is that the cell individual cells in our system they start aging as well and that process of aging is in theory so we are still not able to understand exactly how aging occurs otherwise we would have reversed it or blocked it but i think we are reaching a point where we would start stabilizing the age or starting to reduce the age or starting to increase the age so how is that happening some theories are there i have the links out there one of the theories that is the most common one is the telomere theory telomere theory so what happens is let's say this is a chromosome this is a chromosome a chromosome has genetic material on it various genes on it and when one cell divides the chromosome is divided as well the genetic material is divided too here is here is what is interesting part the machinery the machinery that helps duplicate a chromosome for that machinery imagine these are tiny cranes cranes small tiny tiny machines that would jump on top of this chromosome and they would start working here and they would start to duplicate this chromosome so as they move on this chromosome and they reach the end they need more space to be able to duplicate the end part of a chromosome they need a standing place so i should make it actually this way imagine that the crane the machine would stand here which is going to duplicate this chromosome and the machine will move backwards while it develops the copy of the chromosome when it reaches here and it is making the copy for making the copy of this last piece the machine has to stand outside of the chromosome to be able to make a copy of this piece if it cannot stand outside the chromosome it cannot read the part that is under it and make a copy of that so to do that this is i'm, I'm putting this in a layman's term to do this all chromosomes have a tiny thread at the end which is called a telomere this little thread is called a telomere the machine the crane 
or the replication enzymes will go and stand on the telomere and they would then replicate this last part of the of the chromosome what they will do is they would even keep moving backwards on the telomere to reach its end and then over here they would duplicate till here so imagine when one cell divides the machine is standing here at the end of the telomere it has duplicated everything up to this point but whatever is underneath the machine is not going to be duplicated that means with each cell division a piece of the telomere will not be duplicated and the telomere will become smaller this is like if you play video games you know in the video game the character has a lifeline attached to it and then slowly as we beat up the character that lifeline starts reducing and when it reaches zero the, the character dies this is the telomeres are exactly that lifeline so with each cell division what would happen is so imagine that one cell division happened and this part of the telomere is not divide replicated now because machine was standing on it the next time when the new chromosome copy that is formed that copy now has a telomere which is smaller it is this much smaller so when this copy will be divided again and the machine stands here and it starts duplicating the chromosome and moves this way it is going to end up all the way here and stand here and replicate up to this part so once again this last piece will not be replicated so the new copy that will be formed of the dna that new copy will be will have a smaller telomere finally we'll reach a point when the telomere is gone and all we are left with gone or it has become really small for example in the beginning when when a child is born the telomere size is 11000 bases that is imagine a nucleic acid base is a unit of measurement 11000 bricks but in in our old age the total length is left to be 11 about 4000 bases when we reach that point the machine cannot fully fit on the telomere and it stays a part of that may actually stay on the chromosome as well that means right under the chromosome this piece is not going to be this piece is not going to be replicated so the chromosome that will be formed as a as a result has a defect in it one piece last piece is not made correctly this is where the cancers will start this is where the cell damage would start this type of a damage cannot be repaired that is one secondly a cell that has a smaller telomere cannot be duplicated a lot of time because with each duplication the telomere would become shorter and the cell would start aging and eventually it would not be able to duplicate anymore because there is not much telomere left because of that a cell that is a fetal cell that has full telomere length and the fetal cell has the potential to replicate. Every cell has the potential in the child to replicate. This is not the case for adults. Now, before I continue with this discussion, don't think that what I'm saying is that we must use fetal tissue because I want to show you something. There was a Nobel Prize given. Here. So look at this. New method for turning skin cells into pluripotent stem cells. July 6, 2018. Recent. There was a Nobel Prize given to a Japanese scientist who figured out a way to take an adult's skin cell and convert that into a stem cell. What does that mean? They took our skin cells are stable cells, although skin cells can divide as well. Correct? We know the GIT surface cells, the GIT cells, the conjunctiva, reproductive system cells, the skin cells, bone marrow cells, they are all going to be dividing every, every few days. This is why when we take chemotherapy for cancer, 
these are the three tissues that become very damaged. Blood gets damaged, so we become immunosuppressed because in the cancer therapy, normally we suppress anything that is dividing and that would suppress our tissues that are dividing as well, including bone marrow. So the person would develop anemias and other blood issues. And because of the uh, T cells and B cells and innate cells and those cells, when they are not dividing, will become prone to infections. So we, we become immunosuppressed. Then remember the person who is taking chemotherapy, their hair fall off because the skin cells are continuing to divide and maintain our skin's integrity. And when they would not divide anymore, the hair would fall off. Similarly, folks who are taking chemotherapy, they find it difficult to eat because they develop nausea and vomiting because their inner surfaces of the GIT become all uh, upset as well because the cells are not correctly dividing and not refreshing the skin. And there are some other cells as well in the body that divide. So what this scientist did was he took a skin cell from an adult. He used a CRISPR technology on it. CRISPR technology, you can say that it's a, it is a technology to edit genes. And with that technology, they opened the genes that allow a cell to divide like a stem cell. So that means an adult cell can be converted to a stem cell. And if that is something that is possible, for example, here, then it is possible for us to go back and say, for ethical reasons, don't use the fetal tissue cells anymore. Take, harvest some cells from an adult, take maybe the skin cell, convert them into stem cell, and then use them. This is a possibility and for which there should be a push and there should be a, um, a campaign to do this more often. So I wanted to show this before. So you don't think that I'm just talking about why use um, the stem cells or the fetal cells. But I wanted to show you why, uh, why are the fetal cells used today? Now, I think that this becomes clear that the fetal cells are used primarily for two reasons. One, their potential to become other cells. And the second, their potential to become replicated and duplicated for a long time. Then there is another interesting aspect that I saw in a religious article here. Um, that was, where is that? So this is a Catholic, Catholic news agency. And once again, Catholic or Muslims or Hindus or um, other religions, I am not a scholar of any. I just saw that this was an interesting article and I brought it up. So here, this was an interesting discussion of the vaccines. And in this, first I wanted to read this. The Vatican has said that researchers have duty to avoid using cell lines derived from aborted children in vaccine production and have an obligation to denounce and reject publicly the original immoral act of abortion. So that is Vatican's position. Then they say the church has allowed the use of vaccine produced in fetal cells if no alternative exists, while stressing the importance of protecting, protesting the vaccine's production and encouraging vigorous efforts to promote the creation of alternatives. So that is the second uh, position there. Now, here, in an internal memo dated November 23, Bishop Kevin Rhodes, who chairs the Bishop's Committee on Doctrine. And so once again, please, um, I found this article and it had some answers. This does not mean that I am leaning towards what, what Catholics would say or what atheists would say or what Protestants would say or Muslims would say or Hindus would say. I'm just picking up one discussion and putting that in front of you. So who chairs the Bishop's Committee on Doctrine and Archbishop jo Joseph Newman, the head of the Committee on Pro-Life Activities, wrote to the bishops of the United States that the two RNA vaccines, that is Moderna and Pfizer, candidates appear to be ethically sound. And they are not completely free from, from any connection to abortion, however, as both Pfizer and Moderna made use of 
tainted cell line. So they use a the term tainted, and that is why I wanted to include it. So what are they talking about? So here, I'm going to go to one more part of the discussion. That is this one. So I have still to handle the ethics and laws and why use it. I've already discussed that. Can we use adult cell? Yes, we should actually push for doing that. But now the question is, do the vaccines have the fetal tissue? And then I'll come to this point that if the fetal tissue is actually injected in us, what would happen? So do vaccines have the fetal tissue? So let's look at it. Moderna is not made in the fetal tissue. Normally what happens is traditional vaccines, you make an adenovirus. So please, uh, hear me out here with some more attention because the most of the comments that I saw my, with my previous video were missing this point and I thought I had explained it. Let's say this is an adenovirus that we want to create as a vaccine, not DNA, an adenovirus. So what we do is we take the adenovirus DNA, we take the DNA of the adenovirus, we remove the part of the adenovirus that allows it to replicate. We delete that gene so that this virus will not increase in number when it is injected in our body. We add the DNA of the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2. We make this DNA outside of our body. We construct it with genetic engineering then we need some cells to act like factories. They would take up this DNA and use it to make adenoviruses. This all is happening outside of the, of the human body. So I want to show you why I'm saying this. On my video, there is somebody, Fanik Ran, who said at 1050 of my last video, what's the different... Uh, so what's different from what she said? You guys are playing with the DNA of people. She's right. We don't want this, that in our bodies. You explain it well, and that actually confirm her speech concerns. <laughs> so kind of backfired. So here is the here is what I was talking about. This is that point in video. And this I had said very clearly in the previous video that this is a plasmid. A plasmid is DNA from a bacteria, for example. In the case of this vaccine, um, Pfizer's vaccine, we would take, so this, let's say, let's not use Moderna's name here. Let's use Pfizer, Pfizer AstraZeneca vaccine. They would take the virus DNA. I hope I'm clear outside of our body, then take spike protein DNA. They will make DNA from the RNA and they would combine them together, which will be called recombinant DNA outside of our body. They would move this DNA, this whole piece into a cell, again, outside of our body. But who is this cell? Who is this guy? This cell is a fetal tissue cell. So if somebody is going to be upset about usage of fetal cells, then here is your reason to be upset. But that video's message is incorrect. So have the correct science. And then you say, I want to object on that for ethical reasons, for my belief reasons, fine. But at least don't object on something with wrong science. So here, this DNA is injected into a host cell. This host cell line, in case of Pfizer, is HEK293, which we talked about last day as well. Human embryo for kidney tissue, 293. I think this was a, a female who was aborted in Netherlands, not aborted for the uh, reason to get the cells from her, but she was electively aborted. That means she, she was not a spontaneously aborted child. She was aborted by mother's decision to abort. And then they harvested these cells from her. Nowadays, so this is, I think, 1960 or 70. 
Nowadays, these HEK293 cells are the copies of the copies of the copies of those cells. This is what they were calling here. Um, where was that? Here. <clears throat> For example, in case of Moderna, they were calling they are not completely free. So I will go to Moderna in a second. Let's stay with Pfizer. So Pfizer then takes this DNA and put that in this cell line. Now this DNA, <coughs> excuse me, when placed in this cell will then make adenoviruses. These adenoviruses are actually the, the vaccine. So when these cells have made, and so there are millions of cells cloned and copied, and they are sitting in here and they are making these viruses. So when they have made billions of viruses, then what they do is they break down these cells, they lyse them. Lies means to break. So they break them down and they take this virus out of them. And then they have purification mechanism where they take the virus. And of course, now the viruses are outside the cell, but in here, there are broken pieces of the cells as well. Correct? So they have to kind of filter out the virus from here and scoop it out and take it out. And then they take it into another bath and then they filter it out once more and they this is called the process of purification and they they filter it out once more and they take it out again and they give them one more bath and so on finally we are left with the virus only and any broken pieces of the fetal tissue cell which so <clears throat> another uh, definition philosophical uh, problem here to solve and again i cannot solve it I saw in that uh, Catholics news agency site where they solved it. <coughs> Excuse me. The problem to solve is that fetus that was aborted in 1960s, 70s, they took the cell from her kidneys. Then they made copies of these cells. And then they made copies of those cells. And they just kept duplicating those and so on. Are these clones considered the fetal cells? That is the basic problem to answer. And again, I'm not going to answer that question. The Here they said these are the copies, but they are related to the original fetal cell. So this is tainted. And they have an, another reason for calling it tainted, and I'll explain it. So back here, what they do is they keep giving a bath to this thing and they keep purifying it, finally when they reach the bottle, only the viruses, the adenoviruses are present here and the fetal tissue cells are not. So let's say in uh, just for, um, let's assume that you know what, some cells are actually here or some pieces of the cells are here. This does not happen, but I'm just doing it for another topic I wanna discuss. If this happens, which um, I can assure you that this does not happen because they can actually purify it. But let's say if this happens, then we have two problems, an ethical problem and a scientific problem, a medical concepts issue. Ethical problem is that there is fetal tissue cell here or the pieces of that cell here. That is an ethical problem. The medical problem is if you inject into us, into anyone, a foreign antigen, a foreign host cell, then our immune system does not like it. So how does our immune system respond in that case? So <clears throat> back here, if I look at this one, can foreign tissue survive in our bodies? What do we do with it? And all of us are actually very much aware of what happens if foreign tissue is brought into our body. Blood transfusion is that example. Have you seen how much care is taken for blood matching before they can put the blood in us? Because our body does not let any cells from outside, which are not ours, 
to survive in us. Blood transfusion, if the blood is not a good match, either we'll develop an allergic reaction and we'll get hurt, or we would actually destroy that blood in a few seconds, minutes, hours. If a kidney is donated and is placed inside a body which is not correct match, within two, three minutes, the kidney becomes um, bloodless because our immune system attacks and kills it. You know that when there is organ transplant, for example, liver transplant or liver or kidney transplant or cardiac transplant, people may have to be immunosuppressed for life because our immune system does not tolerate external cells from other human beings. There was a time that they, in the beginning of the 19th century, where they would put the horse's serum in us because we were not aware of the B cells and antibodies. So they thought that the horse has some antibodies that are useful for us and they would inject just like convalescent plasma. So they used to use horses convalescent plasma and that would actually give us reactions. Then they started using people's plasma, convalescent plasma, but that would give us reactions as well. And so they figured out that our body rejects any cells coming from outside. And so that is why the whole organ transplant science came together. And to give you another example, even in a pregnant mother, if for some accidental reason, baby's blood is injected accidentally, let's say the placenta got damaged at the time of birth or before, and some baby's blood is spilled into the mother, there can be life-threatening issue to the mother and vice versa. This is why the rhesus compatibility is done. And this is why mothers may need to become immunized before if their child might give them their cells on the way out when the placenta is detaching. So even a mother and her child, which is developing in her body, may actually react to each other's cells. And we know this. This is a daily science. Blood donations, blood transfusions, organ transfusions, Reese's incompatibility in mother and child. So considering that, if you come here, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> my cough has become much better, but still some remnants. So if you see here, let's say, so ethical problem here, if there is, if there is fetal tissue, then there is an ethical problem that why is there fetal tissue? Get it. But let's look at it from science point of view as well. Let's say this, this cell is infused in our deltoid muscle. So right, the shoulder muscle. The, we have given the injection of this. And we have the, I could use a better color here. <clears throat> we have the vaccine here. And let's say the vaccine has some cells. Now remember, our body can handle a complete kidney and destroy it in seconds if it is not compatible. We can handle blood from outside and destroy it in seconds if it is not compatible. Here we are talking about a few milliliters. Let's say there are cells. So these are fetal cells or pieces of fetal cells. This is not going to happen, but I'm just for, for medical concepts point of view let's say it is some something is there our body our immune system is immediately attack going to attack this how are we going to attack it these cells and these pieces have mhc complexes on them mhc1 and mhc2 complexes they are antigenic for us just like any other antigen or bacteria or viruses, these are antigenic for us. Our trained cells, that is macrophages, dendritic cells, neutrophils, and so on, our innate arm cells, are going to look at these cells and say, what the heck is this? These are not my tissue cells. They would immediately eat them up. A macrophage can eat up a hundred cells within a few hours or days. 
then it becomes old it has done enough work then then another macrophage would eat that macrophage and remove it so the macrophage for example is going to come in and start eating up these cells and destroying them in that process it is going to present those cells on or pieces of those cells on its surface to tell the immune system that hey we have gotten some foreign material in here and what would happen is our other t cells and and naive t cell would be attached you know the whole immune mechanism naive t cell would become attached over here they would become um, sensitized and then they would pick up all of this trash from here and destroy it and this would happen in a few hours or days this destruction of the antigen itself that is the the vaccine while it is training our body and if there is anything else in there this destruction is what causes the activation of the immune system local inflammation which causes pain and the, why i'm specifically talking about it because there was a comment on my video that somebody said see that there is a there is pain at the site of injection which means our immune system has become damaged no our immune system has not become damaged our immune system has become active it is learning to defend against the the virus the vaccine the s antigen and any other thing that come in and we would clear it out and destroy it <clears throat> so can a fetal tissue so again from an ethics point of view if there was fetal tissue in there and you said well they injected me the cells and that is wrong fine so the answer to that is there is actually no fetal tissue in there on a more medical so let's say you are not more concerned about this at some fetal tissue cell or the clones of the cell were injected but you are more concerned that hey there are some cells from somebody else in me now that we do blood transfusions we take care of it in a second if we have to um kidney trans other things so we can very easily take care of them i'll give you one more example um <clears throat> those of you who are intimate intimate with your partners whenever you kiss or whenever you have sexual intercourses there are cellular exchanges that occur if you can take a swab just by rubbing against the buccal mucosa what do you think kiss would not exchange cells they do and we can just take care of them it's not a big deal so here if the cells would come in they would be destroyed and removed so medically there is there is no issue then i wanted to add one more comment here and that is the dna that our dna somehow will become altered number one this these things cannot do that if we could alter our dna like this do you know then i would like to do what i would like to have some dna altering technology that can add to our telomeres <laughs> i wish we could have it dna altering technology that would go in and add to our telomeres so that our age can be increased or our youth can be brought in why because if the telomere is long that allows the machines the telomerases and other things to live on the telomere and repair the chromosomes and make healthy beautiful fresh cells we haven't been able to do it if we could use dna editing technologies we could actually take care of so many genetic problems so many hemophilias so many other genetic defects that we could have fixed we we are not able to do that it's just not possible and now let me give you why just not saying not possible but let me actually explain the mechanism <clears throat> so let's say here is a cell and here is a nucleus and here is the dna our cells do you know that our dna is continuously getting damaged so when you go out let's say in sun you know that if you stay in the sun for example on the beach for a long period of time your skin becomes all red and it is damaged and it starts peeling correct why does that happen this the sunlight burns our cells not only it burns our cells the light energy actually can fuse some nucleotide bases i shouldn't fuse them this way i should fuse them this way they can fuse the nucleotide bases by giving energy this is like welding them together it happens all the time and uh, we have dna repair 
enzymes in our system that know how our DNA should be. They proofread our system and they correct. They come in and let's say I'm sitting in the light right now and that light is falling on my skin and it is causing damage to the DNA right now. If that is not corrected, I will develop cancer. So those folks actually who have deficiencies of such enzymes that correct their DNAs, they develop cancers very fast and they die in very early ages. So let's say that I am sitting under the sun and my skin is developing DNA breakdowns. And what will happen is enzymes will come in. They will excise this part off. They will, they will take it out. Then they will inject the corrected piece here. So they would repair it. We have proof readers and repair systems. Our cells are not that helpless that we can just send an enzyme and somehow it would edit the DNA. And if that could have been done, then there are more bigger diseases to take care of than just to try to alter our DNA. And let's say if our DNA actually becomes altered, you know that a tiny percentage of DNA alteration actually means cancer or we will become something else. So there is about 100,000 people who have gone through vaccine trials. They have not developed cancers. And we can't say that they would develop cancer somewhere in the future because this damage is immediate. You cannot send an enzyme in there to say, this enzyme is going to sit here for next 10 years and 10 years later, it is going to cause the DNA damage. That's not going to happen. If it is going to cause the damage to the DNA, it is going to cause it today. Then let me tell you one more interesting thing. Why this is not possible. That is when the cell <clears throat> cell's DNA is altered. That is called a cancer cell. Right? We handle our cancer cells all the time. Right now, in you and in me, while we are sitting, there are various stresses, chemical stresses, electrical stresses, photoelectric stresses that are changing our DNA. And our DNA is being fixed right now on a daily basis. It is scary when you read it in medical sciences that how often we get DNA damages and repairs. And any repair that gets uh, uh, incorrectly done becomes a cancer. So let's say that this cell actually was introduced with some new DNA. That means this cell has now become a cancer cell. This cell is going to become rogue. That rogue cell is very easily detected by our immune cells and immediately destroyed. This is how we, so those DNAs that cannot be repaired, those DNAs would actually cause apoptosis inside the cell or they would cause the, in the surrounding immune cells to kill them. So that is the natural killer cells or innate um, uh, the um, neutrophils. So can the DNA actually be changed and we can live with it? No, we cannot live with the changed DNA. Even if we medically wanted to do it to fix something, it is a very difficult thing. We can take a cell outside in a, in a dish and change it and kind of leave it in an isolated environment. But inside our body with, our, with the presence of our immune system and the surveillance that is going on, that's not going to happen. So now if I come back here <clears throat> to our original set of topics here, I'm going to show you the ethics and laws in a second now. Why use the fetal tissue? Because it has the unlimited replication power and it has long telomerases, so it, its age is long. And then can we use adult cells? I actually think that we can. So my opinion will be that those entities, those people who have um, a, a commentary on it to say this is wrong, they should actually now promote this. Instead of just protesting the fetal tissue, they should say, why not we take adult tissues and start making them? Uh, into the stem cells. Then can the tissue with the cells and genetic pieces, small broken pieces of the cell live in us? No, it cannot. Do the vaccines have it or not? So now going back to this one, this is Pfizer's vaccine. So Pfizer's vaccine is made in HEK 293. So now from some religious folks point of view, this may be wrong, 
because it is made in fetal tissue and they are just in general not a proponent or not accepting of the let's say abortion so they they feel this is wrong and so they would not use it if that is the case pfizer vaccine is not for you because it is made in fetal tissue now let's look at the moderna vaccine moderna and i have the the site here <clears throat> Moderna. So here, no, so that was different. This is the one. I think this is the one. So this site, this little study here, and I have the link in there. This, if you see in the study, you would see that the after the references, there are supporters acknowledgements, affiliations. So if you see for this study, the affiliation has Moderna in it. Do you see this? Moderna. Now, what is this? This study is that some scientists, including Moderna scientists, were trying to figure out how to make Moderna's vaccine. And for that, they needed to figure out what part of the virus to attack. So they were designing the vaccine. So to design that, they were taking various pieces of RNA from the virus and they were injecting them into some cells, fetal tissue cell, to make those antigens and then see, can we neutralize them? So they were trying to find out the pieces, the spike protein pieces that are correctly to be attacked. So for that, if I, if I look up the HEK here, so these are the cell lines that they used in this HEK293T. So this was a cell that was used. This is again HEK cell. <clears throat> it was used to design the vaccine, but it was not used to produce the vaccine. So after designing, Moderna's vaccine is actually used to be produced in a lipid nanoparticle. So they have lipid nanoparticles and they have the uh, mRNA and they inject those mRNA in there. And this all is done without the help of any fetal tissue or any tissue cells. Then they inject it in you and there is no fetal tissue cell either. Interestingly, they did not test it on fetal tissue cells either. Mo majority of the testing was done on human beings. So in this case, it was interesting for me that how religious folks looked at it. And they said, here, so they're talking about Moderna. So look, neither the Pfizer nor the Moderna vaccine is involved. Vaccine involved the use of cell lines that originated in fetal tissue taken from the body of an aborted baby at any level of the design, development, or production. They are not completely free of any connection to abortion, however, as both Pfizer and Moderna made use of a tainted cell line for one of the confirmatory lab tests of their products, the bishop wrote, referring to the HAK293 T cells. So these T cells are transfected cell. Transfected cell mean you take a HEK293 cell, you add the adenovirus replication gene in it, and then you add the mRNA to see if it would make whatever you are trying to make, or some other transfection in it, not necessarily the adenovirus, because Moderna and Pfizer do not use uh, adenovirus. That means their design of the RNA, identification of the part of the RNA, needed experimentation that used those tissue cells. Again, those folks who feel that they do not want to be associated with a vaccine that was used, that was designed in a fetal tissue cell, then there is a problem. But according to the religious entities, what I'm saying is they're simply saying that is okay, it was designed in there, but it is not produced in there. So Pfizer and Moderna actually in these um, terms have actually done better because they, are, they do not have involvement of the fetal tissue. They do not have the tissue cells themselves. That is also the case with the, with the um, CHADOX1 or uh, AstraZeneca. Any other traditional vaccine, any traditional vaccine that has adenovirus or for example, polio vaccine or others, they are made with this technology. 
they are made with the cells used as um, uh, as the factories and not just these vaccine there are many other drugs that are made this way there are many other researches that are done this way so my final comment for today here are the some ethics that are there so this is american medical association they say that research with human fetal tissue research has led to the development of a number of things so there is advancement however there are concerns that have been raised about potential conflict of interest. So what is the kind of co conflict of interest? Somebody trying to harvest the fetal tissue to sell it. That means they will be motivated to cause abortions. And so there is an ethical problem there that if they are able to sell that tissue, then they will be motivated for the abortion. So selling is, is not allowed. Any intent to suggest to abort because the doctor knows that maybe then I can use the tissue cells to do some research is also not allowed. So there are a number of ethical opinions here that should be done. With that, there are laws. So here, if you see, there are this is US 42, US Code 289G2, prohibit, prohibitions regarding human fetal tissue. So the basic thing is it cannot be transactional. And so that is here. Then in the Trump time, they have actually made these laws a little more um, difficult as well. Not that they banned it. People said that they Trump has banned it. And once again, uh, this is not Republican or, or, or Democrats, and this is not political. I'm just presenting you what is a state in the US at this time. So in Trump's era, they had done one more, more change in these laws to say that if you are going to use fetal tissue for some research, you would have to have even more stringent scrutiny for why you're doing it. And federal government is not going to give you the funds to do this. And maybe states or private entities can still do that. And uh, this is why some folks say that the uh, research advancement in stem cell is moved to Europe and others because it is more difficult here. So this is the US side. Um, here is a link that I have which shows you the benefits of using the fetal tissue. This is the link that I showed that there are now possibilities to use adult tissue. So it is not, I think it is not entirely necessary to use the fetal tissue lines if you wanted to not use them. So maybe there need to be a, uh, I said it now, I'm maybe sounding like a broken record. This may not, this, there may be a time now to go back and say, you know what, let's, stop the HEK 293 and MRCs 5 and all that and let's have adult tissue and convert them into stem cells and then use them. And this is the uh, stem cell, uh, adult stem cell discussion that I showed you. Here is AstraZeneca. In the AstraZeneca, <clears throat> it is actually, if you watch their video here, they would show in their video at some point that there are host cells that are used. Um, so you, you can watch this video. So the host cell here are HEK293, but they are not in the vaccine itself. They're not going to inject them into us. And so here is another discussion of what these cells are. So that video that said MRC5 cells are used, that they're not used, HEK293 are used and so on. Then here is a link which I have been showing you before. This is the Moderna's testing of the vaccine or designing of the vaccine link. Um, here, the telomerase discussion that I did, this is Wikipedia telomerase and what is it and how it is used and what is the benefit of it and, and when we lose it, how do we age and finally die. This is the heart development. So the heart in a child, in a developing baby, by the way, my cardiovascular embryology is one of the best in the world. So I would recommend that you watch it. It's on YouTube as well. When a baby is born or, or sorry, is forming. In the upper part of the baby, the heart that is here, let me actually stop sharing so I can point to my, so heart that is here, in the beginning when we are developing is actually here on the top of our head. It starts developing here. On 21st day, it starts beating. Or the tubes, the heart tube starts beating. That is about five weeks on the last menstrual period. Then these heart tubes, they merge with each other. And finally, we fold. In the beginning, we are like a paper. And then 
that that paper folds and the heart that was developing here comes to lie here inside the chest and this fold here this fold becomes two three dimensional and we develop mouth and other things here so these are the discussions if um, you like for my last video check out there are many many comments there um, where people have been both some have been upset and some have been happy for the discussion but <clears throat> once again um, for example here Fenix says uh, it is dramatic only devil thinks it's not dramatic to have abortion baby lung tissue in our vaccine there is no lung tissue in the vaccine question uh, so that is William's question then here is another she didn't create a confusion she is right for the long time that the change you guys putting in our bodies will affect our bodies one day five years or 10 to 30 years later no number one there is no change being put in and no it's not going to go and like a trojan horse just sit in there and then 10 15 years later come up and do something um and then <laughs> So there is a comment here that it doesn't matter if she cannot spell or call the name. For me, that matters that she did not have done her research. If she had done the research, she would at least know the name of what she's talking about other than. And somebody had said to me in, in the comments here that she was somebody who whose son had undergone, uh, had received vaccine and that caused the son to become, had have some sort of a reaction. And now he's dependent on her forever and so give her some compassion and this is why she does this lots of compassion i think the most important thing in here you must have noticed i have never tried to say that anti-vaxxers should not be here or vaccine people should only be here or muslims should be here or not here or some other religion should be here or not here i've never done it or republican or democrat the reason for that is at this time we, the whole world is stuck. So whoever can benefit from any knowledge that we can share and discuss with each other should benefit from it. But I am very strongly opposed to providing misinformation that can kill others. So if I came to you, so the, that comment translated to me this way, that hey, her baby became sick because of vaccine and now she should be given a right to misinform others to the point that they can be dying. I don't think that is an allowable thing to do. Nobody out of their anger, out of their hurt, out of their heartbreak can go out and start killing people. And I have a firsthand example that that Stanford's message where they had said some somebody who is murderous, because I have the example of one murder is who wrote that just take steam and, and drink hot water and the virus will be washed into your stomach and over there it would be washed away. So this person, my friend's brother, did that thinking that was Stanford's research and he did not notice that he was becoming aggravated and when he became aggravated enough that he couldn't breathe anymore and this drinking hot water was not working anymore he called 911 he ended up on a ventilator and died this is the kind of damage these misinformed messages can cause so what passion what compassion for so now if that person comes in for the stanford letter and say i did it for the betterment of people you caused people to die whenever i talk here you have seen this that i bring in references so that either you look at that reference and say, Mubin, you're right, or you look at that reference and say, Mubin, you're wrong. So I open myself to be declared right or wrong, but I'm in front of you. Instead of just making up things. So this is why I was not a very, uh, I was not very comfortable with that video. I'm still not. And I still believe that the person who did that video has caused a lot of damage. So this is what we have for today. Uh, I hope that uh, this has made some sense. Let me just answer a couple of questions. I don't want to make it too big. Um, so a couple of questions and then we stop. <clears throat> Rajesh is very, very correct. Ethics is about my truth versus your truth. At the same time, ethics are taken up at some level and com um, made into common structures as well. These are the laws and regulations. 
Uh, however, when you talk about scientific ethic, for example, um, developing your own opinion that the virus, the, the vaccine has the cell, in the fetal cell, and then you ask others not to use it, you can't call it ethics because this is lying. This is fine that if you say vaccine was developed in a fetal tissue and I'm against that and I'm not going to use it and I'm going to tell others not to use it who are of the same mindset. Fine, that is a different thing. That is a, uh, you are citing a fact and then based on that you have an opinion which is yours and you can have some followers with that. But citing misinformation and then creating a reasoning is wrong. Medical knowledge, medical concepts are not opinions. They are concepts. They are medical sciences. If you hear them from me, you should be able to go and check them out somewhere. Shahida says, did the woman vaccinated her child according to your advice? I do not know. So uh, somebody had left a comment. I don't even know that if that person knows her uh, or he was just making up his own story about her, that she had a vaccination. And um, I feel bad about it um, if somebody got... Um, hurt was it because of vaccine or something but i feel bad about that <laughs> this is Kyrie. but using that to say now i'm going to provide misinformation and please give me a um, pass to do that that is wrong especially at this time Absolute, absolutely. So Genesis, whatever you choose for you and your family, I respect. I Please just research, research and research. Absolutely. Do you research? What I'm doing here is also presenting you research. These are not the facts Mubeen made at home. But I'm also not just pulling things out of thin air and saying, please, because you listen to me, now you should agree with these things that I'm making up. I put references in front of you. So you can remove me from the scene, look at the references, and then decide that what is there and what are the facts. Wayne says, children and teens don't have vaccination as of yet. How much longer? Also, I heard 60% of population will not take the vax. So they're saying that 16 years and above are eligible. Um, younger children, because they have not tested on, they have tested on 12 years and older, but they don't have enough data. So I think that they will not have it anytime soon. Um, now the 60% of the population, today I was listening that they have started in, uh, inoculating in the US and the hospital system that is starting for their healthcare workers, 30% of the nurses said they will not have it. Another 30% said we are still thinking about it. So there is a, uh, there is this going on. And this is why I, feel that these videos are causing harm because they're creating doubts. And we are living in an exceptionally bad time where the truth has become lost. Everyone has picked up their little podcast and video like I am doing, and they are offering information, disinformation, whatever they have in the name of opinion. Medical facts cannot be opinions, or opinions cannot become medical facts. There are hypotheses, then there are testing, and there is a result of that. So that is where the problem is. Somebody was asking me today that, what do you think, how would we go with the vaccine? And I said, a majority of the world is going to come out of the issue by using the vaccines. And we, unfortunately, in the US are once again going to get stuck. First, we got stuck in managing this thing, and we had we were the most damaged nation. And now we're going to get stuck on the vaccine. And once again, we are going to pay the price by having more people um, get the disease and um, die or, or have issues. And uh, this, let me, I know that video is becoming long, but I want to share one more thing that I receive very commonly. And I feel that is so wrong to, to look at it this way. Many people either comment or send me a message saying, well, in the US, we are 300 million people. And the total deaths are, unfortunately, today, 300,000. 
let's use this number today and they say well this this is a fraction of this so what is your problem and then they say the worst that i haven't forgotten even today it was a tweet to me and that said that person said people die what is your problem so here is an important thing to understand this disease if there are no vaccines this disease has not stopped it is still expanding so so dividing the total population and the total dead over that population is not a fair comparison fair way to work because this is still increasing if out of the population so luffy is here if out of the population is set had died and it had stopped there then you would say out of x population a y fraction had died and let's see what that fraction is but when this is still growing how can you divide them like this and then say we are okay the right way at this time to do is to see what are the number of cases and this is a bad idea to simply say we are testing more so we have more number of cases out of the number of cases how many are dying so let's say this is x prime so then you say okay y over x prime that is a number to use and then say how fast is the y growing and how fast is the death happening and if we have 300 million how where is the cut off point for the for the herd immunity till that time we are keep going to grow if we don't stop it and then extrapolate the death rate to that that is how you count not by out of 300 million there are just 300000 people who died what's your problem i i get these kind of comments it just makes me so mad okay so um, <clears throat> i hope you all had a nice weekend uh, us has started the vaccination from today today i think 10 people were vaccinated and then they would start ramping up the vaccination i hope that we can vaccinate fast enough to reduce the spread of the disease to stabilize it and even those who do not want to have a vaccine they will become protected when others who are open to getting vaccine will become vaccinated and the spread would slow down so <clears throat> this is the discussion for today and um, let's talk tomorrow uh, tomorrow we'll have dr bruce patterson with us and we'll talk about long haulers so with this thank you very much love you all you like a vaccine or you do not like a vaccine i still love you and this is why i do these discussions so that we can protect our ourselves you may have picked up something from here that might help you if that is not vaccine then maybe that is vitamin d or that is ivermectin but there is something here that may help so i am not categorizing people based on that and finally please like subscribe and share and if you wanted to support my work there's a link in the description for the support thank you very much and see you tomorrow if you have questions for dr bruce patterson please tweet them to me so i can ask him thank you bye bye